Okay, the peace of God be with you. Uh, this is uh, a video on what Christians believe, and we're going to be talking about creeds and councils. What are they, and why are they important to Christian uh, belief? You know, this, I think, is a very important topic, because um, uh, I think today, when it comes down to it, we, as uh, postmodern or overmodern Christians, tend to put a lot of stock in, in what we believe as individuals. And of course, that is, we as individuals uh, have the ultimate responsibility of coming to our conclusions. Yes, that's not what I'm talking about. Um, too often, uh, we don't examine or critically reflect on those aspects of our belief system that may have been influenced um, from different, you know, things maybe in our youth or maybe a church we went to. And some of those things may be right, some of those things may not be right. And one of the, th one of the tools I think that we as Christians have today that really guides us uh, are our creeds and our confessions. Because what the creeds are, uh, are statements of belief that come from those Christians that um, went before us, um, our spiritual ancestors, our spiritual um, mothers and fathers, uh, who through the ages have lived out their Christian faith in a faithful way and um, came together collectively in order to make declarations about the Christian faith that were authoritative then and should still be authoritative today. Um, a creed simply comes from the word, I believe, and it is not a complete compendium, right, of Christian belief. It doesn't include everything, but it would include what I would include, what I would say are the essentials, or I think this is what the church recognizes as the essentials, or those foundational truths. And especially as Christians, it's those truths that unite us in our faith. You know, if people ever talk about what really matters, you know, at, through every time and century, there's going to be, uh, you know, certain topics or be belief systems that are going to emerge that sometimes begin to take a lot of precedence and people begin to say this is this is what really matters this is what isn't essential well folks the creeds are the essentials uh, this is what we uh, as christians um, would believe in all time and in all places and so the creeds um, can be looked at as a map or as a guidebook or as an orientation of laying out what it means to be a christian and what has what is believed or has been believed by christians everywhere uh, and it does remind us about the collective nature of our faith, that we do not just have an individual interpretation of what we believe, but what we believe has to be formed by the community that we're in, and what we believe has to be formed by those Christians that have gone before us. And so the creeds are very important for us as Christians, and we need to consider them. Um, and the councils, uh, that's when churches, church leaders will gather together to make um, uh, decisions about church life including, you know, rules and uh, uh, guidelines that Christians need to follow, uh, as well as uh, official church doctrine. Councils are also important because, again, it, both creeds and councils help to correct any um, unhealthy individualism that might come up. And so, to, again, today, I think we may not have as uh, healthy of an appreciation for why these things, or why both of these are important. Um, you know, in Scripture, um, you know, a lot of times there's a big debate about tradition because creeds and councils fall under that category of tradition. And so some people will say, you know, I, I believe in the Bible and it's that's my authority. And what we usually leave out of that, however, is that it is our interpretation. All right. We can all say that we believe the Bible is, you know the standard or, or God's word or even infallible for those people that believe that. But um, but what follows is then the important thing, which is how we interpret it. And way too often Christians will take the idea that um, uh, it is my interpretation that is actually infallible. And so they will say, this is what the Bible says. This is how I'm interpreting it. And so you have to believe it. Um, but really, it's uh, although the Bible is uh, sacred and the authority for us as Christians, um, it does not mean that there is not a um, church authority that we have to o obey as Christians and be in obedience to. And so uh, it, it's interesting because in Scripture we see this. In, in Acts chapter 15, the first Jerusalem council, we see the council. We see them meeting in Scripture uh, and coming up with a, rules of, a list of guidelines for Christians to adhere on issues of uh, circumcision and uh, meat that was um, strangled. 
uh, meat that was sac sacrificed to idols. There was a number of big issues that were that was creating tension in the church, just like there is today. And it was that Jerusalem Council that met to sort that out. And uh, when the council comes to an agreement on that, it's very interesting to read both the count of the council in the book of Acts, as well as the issues, as well as looking at all the other pages of scripture where we see uh, Paul, for example, advocating uh, for his teaching on, on that and, and to see how that council ruled. But there's another interesting passage of scripture I would love to direct you to, which is in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 3, 3 4, 3 and 4. Uh, and here Paul talks about what he has received. He goes, all that which I have received, and this is again the word that I would use translate as of the traditions that we have received as Christians we have a very precious um, truth that we've been given and then he lists this out how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures he was buried and he arose on the third day according to the scriptures again Christ died for our sins um, he was crucified he was buried and he rose again from the dead the resurrection of Jesus Christ according to the scriptures this is again Paul but this is a little creed this is a little statement of faith, um, and it is found in Scripture. And I think there's other examples of this, of where we have these creedal beliefs in Scripture. So yes, creeds are scriptural, uh, and they usually come a, a product out of what a council has produced, but uh, has uh, uh, authorized. But sometimes that creed itself came very organically through uh, Christians experiencing the risen Christ, in this case, passing on what they believed and why they believed it. All right, so uh, really quickly, there are four um, ecumenical creeds that I'm going to introduce to you today very quickly. Again, this is um, an introductory video only. You can go online and you can look these up. Uh, they're all available um, for you to see, but the Apostles' Creed. Um, you know, somewhere between the 2nd and the 6th century, uh, it's hard to date this particular creed. It is not found in the East. It's only found in the West. Uh, it's probably one that we're most familiar with, uh, often recited in churches. Sometimes this creed is used um, for uh, those that are uh, before they're baptized, new Christians uh, before they're baptized. Uh, but the Apostles' Creed, very significant creed. The Nicene Creed, another one that we're probably very, everyone is probably familiar with, the Nicene Creed is often, again, also used in worship. Uh, sometimes both the Apostles' Creed and the Nicene Creeds can be said as prayers. They're not often thought of as prayers, but they can be said as prayers. The Nicene Creed came out of the Council of Nicaea in 325, was also revised in 381. Um, this is a creed that exists both in the East and the West, and it's considered an ecumenical creed uh, and, and probably uh, even more significant than the Apostles' Creed in that it is found in the West as well, and the East as well, I'm sorry. And uh, often this is the one creed that all Christians gather around, uh, plain and simple. This is, this is one where um, uh, it is considered to be um, something that all Christians uh, believe everywhere to this day. The Creed of Chalcedon is uh, the next one. It was came out of the Council of Chalcedon in, in AD 451. Uh, it settled some controversies about the nature of Jesus, the, uh, his humanity and his divinity, as well as the Trinity, the unity of the divine persons and the distinction of Jesus' um, full humanity and full divinity. Those were big, large issues in the early part of the, of the church. And then the final ecumenical creed is the Athanasian Creed, once again defends the trinity and the deity of christ um uh, and that was um uh a creed that um uh, you know i would say that the other significant part about these creeds is that they lead us and they guide us into sal salvation uh this the athanasius creed uh, some christians that i've spoken to don't really like this one because it begins by saying uh you cannot be saved unless you believe these things. And so that has come into conflict with some of the way Christians today understand salvation. But the important point I think that we have to appreciate um, is that um, uh, these creeds very often will, um, they, it can be said that they lead us to salvation, right? Again, I said earlier that these creeds are uh, guide us, that these creeds are um, uh, uh roadmaps. Um, we need a historical mo mo a mooring, all right? The Spirit of God uh, leads us into truth, and that truth is a truth that saves us. Uh, and so, uh, you know, again, if you see that in that creed, you know, don't, and you come from a tradition that, uh, 
you've not used creeds in the past and you really don't understand how they function don't automatically let that that spook you um but you know remember that um uh this these are sp very important spiritual truths in the life of christians and these truths uh will guide us and lead us um to salvation um in the full sense of that word so uh again finally the last thing i wanted to close with is uh the importance of um you know why why church order matters why governance matters why uh these council matter matters a lot of times uh, christians don't do not really understand um the church that they join and they don't really know what the authority structure is and i always encourage people to make sure that you at least get a copy of the bylaws or ask about that because there's a lot of independent churches out there uh, i happen to be a member of the presbyterian church in the usa and so in my denomination there are so many different checks and balances uh, but we have an ordered uh system of government for the peace and unity of the church and i am in um, obedience i, I am uh, in accountable to multiple christians uh, there are some churches in which that does not exist, right, people? And this is, this is, I'm going to move into the light here. Um, this, this can be very dangerous, okay, because uh, I'm, I'm enjoying that beautiful blue sky. And so, um, uh, and the birds are tweeting. It's just a beautiful day here in Florida. Um, but um, the, let me just share with this, share this uh, story uh, in closing here. There uh, well, you can actually go online and read many different stories um, recently of um, churches where a uh, uh, there there may be you know some kind of an accusation against a pastor regarding something, and uh, there was one very uh, big case lately that came forward where um, this church was an independent church, and it, there was no really governing body over that, and the uh, the the people who alleged this abuse and this case the women who did um didn't feel that they were being taken seriously and they had no one to go to um the 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 pastor in that case and the the elders in that case uh were you know sort of uh, you know um uh, didn't at that time really think that uh, or felt that they had done a good job of with an investigation possibly but uh it uh, the media got involved and uh, journalists got involved and this is the thing where you know there's a verse that Paul talks about Christians not going to uh, trial to the court systems and it's often misinterpreted I don't believe that Christians cannot go to secular courts but this is an example I think of exactly what Paul was talking about that it was the journalists of the Chicago Tribune I think it was that actually did an investigation came up with some evidence and broke the story in the news and um you know, later when uh, I think an, an outside agency was called in to investigate, it turned out that the leadership of the church did believe these, uh, uh, the, the women that had come forward, uh, their stories were believable. They had found some evidence for it. Now, the only reason I bring this story up is not to throw mud at Christians, um, but it, it's to remind us all of the importance here of being in a body where there is an authority structure, where there is a um, um, governing body that the church, the pastors are accountable to. You know, it's not just that individual congregation. And so um, in most churches today, um, you will have that system of, of accountability, be it through a system of presbyteries, the way we have it, um, be it through uh, and synods or be it through um, you know, bishops and uh, dioceses. Um, but uh, that is essential part of what it means to be a Christian and live together in community. And we need to have that kind of accountability across the board that gives protections, not just to members of the church and to leaders of the church, but also holds individual congregations accountable as well. And it's all part of how we, how we work together. But if not, if you are attending a church that is an independent body with no accountability outside of itself, um, just be aware of that because you could find a situation where um, there is abuse of power and there is no real checks and balances in that case to, to check power. Um, you know, power corrupts, absolute power corrupts absolutely. Uh, Lord Acton, um, famous philosopher, and uh, I certainly believe that and, have, and, and know that and of myself um, as well as other people that you never want to give power completely over to one individual 
um, because uh, that will become corrupted. It's just human nature. Um, and so we, we need those separation of powers. Uh, we need to share power within the church. And of course, as Christians, we have a completely different view of power that has nothing to do with the way the world sees power. All right, folks, so uh, I talked a little bit about councils and creeds um, and just a little bit about church structure. But these things matter, folks, and this is one of the ways in which uh, when we come to the question of what we as Christians believe, read these creeds, know these creeds, and understand that these creeds are going to be uh, the essentials. It's a building block of what we say is what really is important and what brings fellowship together as well in the church. Uh, and so there's a lot of issues out there. Again, not a full compendium, so it doesn't mean that this is everything that the church believes. There's other things that Christians also believe, but, but these are the ones that I would say are foundational truths and that, uh, the, and that we have received, and it is up to us to pass this along to other generations as well um, and to show them why it matters. And that's the other thing that sometimes we lose the connection about why these things matter. So the Trinity is a good example of that. We have this idea of the Trinity, and sometimes people go, I don't see the Trinity in the Bible. I don't see this anywhere, and I don't even understand why it matters that uh, God is described as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Well, it does matter, and it is important, and it matters to our everyday life. That's what these video series are about. So um, so I hope that that uh, encourages you. If you are not familiar with these creeds, I hope you can look them up online and uh, learn them. If you are saying them in church, uh, don't let it just become a rote thing every Sunday where you just kind of blab it through and you don't even know what it means. You know, when I was a kid, I remember uh, saying these creeds and, you know, the Apostles' Creed, which talks about in the uh, older version of it, the quick and the dead, you know, Jesus will come to judge the quick and the dead. And I thought that meant, you know, um, you know, I, I'm not the fastest runner out there. So, you know, I thought, hey, I, that doesn't mean me. It's the quick people, you know, that are going to get judged. So we sometimes hear these things and we really don't know and understand what they mean. And of course, that means the living uh, and the dead, uh, the belief of the Christian resurrection. So uh, it's important that we get to know these and understand what they mean, why they're important and how they relate to the lives that we live. Um, so anyway, hope that helps. I hope you have a blessed day. Go in God's peace. This is Pastor Omar, uh, hoping that you have a blessed day.